Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. This is the End of Life Journey and Beyond the Sands of Time show that Lisa and I do every weekend, every week, rather, on Mondays. My name is Susan Caperso from East End Doula Care. I'm an End of Life Doula and Legacy Specialist. And Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Susan. I hope you had a great uh, July 4th weekend. My Thank name you. is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. And we are here today to talk about preserving memories, one of my favorite topics. You know me, I love memories. So we get to welcome our guest today. He's Jeff Kay. He's the president of My Digital Memories, and uh, he helps families to immortalize their precious memories organize their photos and media for visual storytelling, bringing yesterday's memories back to the future. And so I welcome you, Jeff, and I can't wait to hear all about the company and, and about you. It's a beautiful so topic. To Thank you for being here, Jeff. Thank you. I'd like to start with how you started this company and how it came about. Well, the company actually, the more I thought about it, this company actually started long before I actually made it a company. Back when I was about, I don't know, six or seven years old, I started to collect um, cards, birthday cards, uh, uh, celebration cards, Hanukkah cards, Christmas cards, because they were, or uh, cards from people or that my family sent me from camp, because they were all, all personal, they had their handwriting on it, and it's it's something that I could really relate to, and that's how it started, and and then I wanted to uh, then as time progressed, technology progressed, and about let's see, about around let's see how old was I when I was about twenty three, many many years ago, mm -hmm. um, I told my dad that, you know, it'd be nice to have some type of way to convert people's media because you were going from eight tracks to cassettes to CDs and it's still evolving. Uh, you're going from VHS to DVD to mini DVD to uh, and now you're even streaming. And if you if you if I even take you before back then, back in Vietnam, you had your Super Eight, you had your eight eight millimeter, uh, you had sixteen millimeter, sixteen millimeter sound, and you, you just have tons of media. And as you may or may not know, media has if. If it's, if it's stored correctly, and by that I mean in a climate controlled environment, its average life expectancy is about 20 years. Oh boy. After that, uh, you'll probably see uh, photo discoloration, uh, the film might be brittle or things like that, and it'll need photo restoration, touch-ups, and that's, that's perhaps, I mean, that's worst case scenario. Um, but um, when I approached my dad with this idea, he's, he's like, well, that's nice. Now go out and get a job. <laughs> so, so fast forward 20 years, my parents passed away. My dad passed away in 2008. My mom passed away in 2018. And my sister and I had the task of going through my parents' house. Well, we're going through their house and we found a bunch of slides and tapes, uh, media, film. I came across birthday cards from, from when I was a year old. I came across, uh, I guess, uh, some type of uh, birthday album, something very much like a gift registry now for weddings, but it was for give it but for when people were born. I don't think they do that. They even do that anymore. But I had all, all these lists of names and numbers and presents. And, and I had all these cards from my first birthday, second birthday, third birthday. And it was kind of ironic because some of the people, uh, while 
I don't know many of these people. Some of them I'm still friends with their kids. So I, I've been friends with their kids for going on 40 plus years and, and others maybe 50. And all these photos were really important to me. And I mean, this is uh, history, my history, my heritage and things like that from, and, and where I come from. And so my sister and I started fighting over the stuff. He's like, well, I don't want it. it. It'll take up too much space. And then here I am in a townhouse she, and she's like, you take it. I'm like, I don't, what, what, what am I gonna do with it? Yeah. So, so then I, I, I thought of this idea I had and I'm like, you know, maybe now is the time for me to start this idea and this venture. So I was able to digitize all the slides, the photographs, the movies and everything and share it with her and her kids and my kids. But even more importantly, trips that my parents went on with, with their friends, a lot of their friends never even saw these pictures or these videos. So I was even able to share that with them and their kids because now their kids are now starting to, uh, how do I put it? Have the same experience as me being a baby boomer where your, your parents are now aging and passing away or unfortunately suffering from Alzheimer's or something else. And they, they wanna keep the, these memories alive because all, all these memories are someone's legacy. They tell a story. Everybody has a story to tell. Jeff, they serve as a validation, point. right? They serve as a validation of your existence, oh, really. Absolutely. And it gives absolutely. you the roots and heritage, like I you said. passed down from generation to generation. That's right. Absolutely. And as I tell my clients, no one's ever forgotten as long as they're remembered. That's right. That's Whether right. it's a person. Oh, I got the chills. I, can I use okay. that? Love that. Love that. I love that. My girlfriend just wrote that, by the way. She has COPD. And she just wrote that same thing. I just want to be remembered. I, you know. and, and from my perspective, that saying can be applied to whether it's a pet. Yes. It can be applied to, to anything. And it's so true. Because if you think about it, even if someone passes, you're still part of their DNA, so that you're still part of them. That's right. So as long as you remember them, they'll always be a part of you. They're, they're, they're part of you anyway. Right. Um, so that's pretty much how I got started. Um, then a couple of years ago, I lost my border collie who suffered um, epilepsy okay. and he had, he was six years old. He had a breakthrough seizure, which that means his meds didn't work. And I was devastated. Um, and I decided, well, you know, as I previously said, this not only works for people, but it also works for pets. So I expanded my idea to incorporate it with pets. And I found when I did that, very much like people, when you preserve their memories, I find it really helped with my grieving process. Yeah. It helped me with my parents' grieving process. It helped me with my pet's grieving process. And it's important. Uh, um, when I was going through, after we cleaned out my parents' house, I was going through my grandfather's wallet. I found a picture behind a picture behind a picture. And the picture was about the size of a postage stamp. And I was e emailing my existing relative saying, who, who is this? Well, it turns out to be my grandfather's mother from the 1890s. Wow. And I'm like, and so I had to hop on Ancestry. I had to find more information and a, the, the, it was just a treasure to find. And then when I compared the profile view of that picture to my mom's picture, 
I could actually see where the genes pass from one generation to the next. Hmm. That's wonderful. And it, 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 it's, it's amazing. So the thing is that people can do this before anything happens. Oh, absolutely. I, I would highly recommend you do it before. <laughs> with, um, with, with birthdays, with anniversaries, I mean, the cabinets of VCR tapes that you can put together in some kind of really cool, you know, like for my daughter's 30th birthday, every birthday that she had and every little celebration, you know, all together in one, in one DVD in one place. And of course you add music to it, right? Add yes, it. Um, <laughs> we digitize uh, VHS tapes. We pretty much any, we pretty much digitize any form of media. Well, it's eight millimeter, 16 millimeter VHS tape, mini DVD and so yes, Jeff, if somebody had um, a collection of these different types of media that we're talking about, the VHS, VHS, the CDs, um, reel to reel, whatever, would you take the combination of all this and put it into one, one platform for them? Is that uh, how, you, how do you exactly do your work? Each one of my projects, as well as, well as my pricing structure, is customized to the client. But so you can do that put, combining, you can combine yes. different media, right? Yes, that, that's one way I, I, I could definitely do it. Um, or if they wanted it separately, I can do it separately. If they wanted music to it, I can do that. If you wanted voiceover to it, I can do that. Um, and then one of the things I also do is I provide storage media. A lot of, uh, yes, uh, I know people use iCloud, you use Google, you use, there's a lot of storage medium out there. And, and there's nothing wrong with them. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that they're right, they're wrong. Um, but from my own perspective, the stuff that I recommend that, that I use is stuff that you own. So you're not tied to terms and conditions. Should, some, should the provider decide to make some change and you can't access it, sure. I don't, I, that, that kind of just makes me very uneasy. As Jeff, I know how, do you, how do you give them their final pro product? Is it just a link that you give them at the end? Is it on something, a flash drive? Like, what do you give them at the end of the project? Um, once again, it's customizable to the client. I can give them a link. I can put it in the cloud for them. I can put it on a DVD. I can put it on a USB. Or depending if it has that much, or if they have that much stuff, I'll even put it on a hard drive. And then uh, I do ship it. I do, I, sh I work globally. Um, but the, uh, my shipping method, I only use UPS with a tracking number. Um, and I've never had any, any, any issues. I'd love to introduce different situations. You know, you look at eulogies, for instance, and you mm -hmm. go to a memorial service or you go to a funeral, and it's really nice to have pictures running and information running about that person. It just makes it so real. And so, and that person's life right in front of you. So oh. I've seen that and I'm sure you do, you do that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but even, let, let's take that a step further. Okay. That, that just touches on a glimpse of somebody's life. What do you do with all the photos and media and film that have been collected up to that point? Yeah. That is uh, the, celebration of life videos, whether they're pet or, or people are lovely. Um, but as you know, everyone's got a story to tell. So if you take that back to when they were born, I mean, what a, what a gift that, I mean, that's a gift for somebody. Yes. What, what do you plan to do with that? I mean, that's, so that I mean, whether you're, you, if you live to be 80, I mean, that's 80 years of a life story. Yes. 
And granted, now we we have cameras. We're we're privileged enough to have cameras where you can hold down the shutter for a second and get a hundred pictures, for example, of basically the same thing. Uh, but one of one of the questions I ask people is, you've got all these photos on your phone. Yeah. How long does it take you to find your favorite picture? Or even in your, in your photo albums, how long does it take you to find that special picture? Well, one of the other things that we do, well, from a digital perspective is we get rid of all the duplicates. Then, then if they want, if they want it, we can tag the photos, so we can so we can organize it from both a digital perspective and a regular photograph perspective. And then, if we want to take that a step further, we can also uh, catalog it, so your digital photos correspond back to your physical photos. That's really cool. I'm such a good example of this, Jeff. I have 151 albums right here in my office, okay? And I had another 8,000 pictures that were in a tub and having moved from my house, there they were. Now, I just scanned them in, but to have them cataloged and have them indexed, like you're saying, that would really help find things. I mean, I guess family and vacations and I guess whatever categories you put into them, um, then I would know where <laughs> everything was. Well, uh, the reason I say that is because it's, yeah, it's, it's very important to preserve somebody's history. But if you take it down, and I can store people's stuff for up to 300 years. Yeah. But so if you take it up for, say you take it 300 years down the road and, and nothing's tagged or organized, how is somebody supposed to know what they're looking at? Yeah, that's right. That's right. What's your that's turnaround on a project, Jeff? I know depending on how large it is, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Turnaround. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. The turnaround um, on the project. I know it, it'll be different for each person because some will be bigger than others. But do you have an average? Uh, I, I I've had some where I, I have. <clears throat> excuse me, a turnaround in a day. I'm working with uh, someone now, uh, potentially, uh, we haven't gone through the, um, the contract signing yet or, or anything, but he has 40,000 slides or photos. <laughs> so from wow. that, that perspective, that could take a year. Wow. Just to put things in, in, into perspective. Wow. Yeah. People have a lot and of- that's wonderful. Me. That's an important project for them to do, you know, yeah. at any time. At any time. Before oh, or ab loss. Absolutely. And I would rather take my time doing it and doing it right the first time than rushing through it and giving them a product that's not as good and say if it's a year pro if it's a year project i'd rather have it take a year than give it and have it be perfect in a year than give it to them 6 months where it could still it still needs a little bit of refinement right people are also very frightened of giving up this stuff so um mm -hmm you know, when we send it to you, um, I don't know where you're located. I didn't ask that. Um, but, you know, when we send it, is there some kind of guarantee of getting it? I mean, you know, it's hard. If I would take my albums and start bringing them apart, that'd be pretty scary to me. So um, how do you, how do you work that? <laughs> how do I work that? Well, I know there are are the companies that do the same thing, uh, whether you're using Legacy Box, iMemories, or any of these other companies that, that you would still have to ship it to. Uh, but what, 
what I find is that in the years that I've been doing this uh, is that UPS is absolutely the best. The tracking uh, number. You get a tracking number <clears throat> and you can track it. Uh, I can tell you that I have 17 years of being an international project manager. So my company being a global business, <clears throat> I make sure the customer provides me the shipping tracking number. When, as soon as I receive it, they're notified that I have it. And as I go through the various uh, processes and I keep them apprised of various milestones. And they, they do get both the, the digital and the originals back. Right. Do you encourage people to insure their box of items? You can insure it. I, I don't know what the value I, is. How I do mean, you put the value on it? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know companies like Forever, if they lose it, they'll give you $5,000. But from my perspective, I don't know how you put a monetary value yeah on something that's irreplaceable. That's right. That's right. That's right. Where and, are you located, by the way, Jeff? Excuse me? Where are you located? I am located in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'm a solopreneur, uh, have a small business. Um, so I, lost, uh, I was gonna say something, I lost my train of thought. So, oh, yes. As I mentioned, do you have companies like <clears throat> these online companies, but when you ship it to them, do you know who has your photos? Sure. Do you know where they're going in the company? Are the companies siloed? So does somebody get your slides? Does somebody get your photograph? Does somebody get your video? Uh, if you had a question, who do you call? Well, for me, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a one-man band. And so for, for myself, how many companies can, can you call and speak with the CEO or the founder of the company? Which by the way, why don't we put, why don't you tell us the contact information? It's a good time. Sure. I can be reached at 703-861-2793 or my website's www my digital hyphen memories.com or if you want to send me an email it's jeff at my digital hyphen memories.com nice why don't you tell some stories about some of the interesting um, you know projects that you've done i'm sure you've done some really different things yes i do uh i did a project uh lady brought me some movies uh, eight millimeter that she's never seen wow. and her dad was in vietnam she she was born after her dad was deployed and unfortunately her dad was killed in vietnam mm -hmm. so she never heard his voice the tapes were never played so after the it was digital after I, I digitized and stuff for her she she broke down in tears i mean it was just such a a, a special and memorable moment that she she never heard in 30 35 years yeah. i wonder so. i i have people who bring me videotapes and more often than not they're like well can you digitize these for me I don't know what's on them. And they're videos of maybe their kids' first steps mm. or life's milestones. I mean, these are important events. And it's just, they find it very touching. It's, it's very emotional. And that's, and that's why I got into this business. 
It really is fulfilling. I know I do projects like that myself, Jeff. But I have a question to ask you now, now about um, some of my uh, history here. So my husband passed away eight years ago, but when we got married, we were married 25 years, I was all about the videoing. So I had the little VHS tapes, mm -hmm. had a whole box of them. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I went and bought this little machine that I hooked my camera up to and then it put it on CD. Now I have a whole box of CDs and not a single CD player in my house. Mm -hmm. So what would your suggestion be to me? Is there something that I can do with all these CDs to put them on one thing? I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll just keep the CDs and find a CD player to watch them. No. Uh, my recommendation would be to get with someone and have them converted to digital and probably put them in the cloud. Um, Otherwise, you're going to keep re-digitizing the stuff, your memories. So if you at least digitized it once and put it in the cloud, I, I think the cloud is, is at least a long-term solution for right now. I mean, right now it's the latest and greatest because as, as I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, you've seen, you've seen your eight millimeter tapes, then you go into 16 millimeter meter tapes and then you added sound to it then you went to VHS then you went to, to DVD and technology keeps evolving um, so I mean you, so you if I had that of, done if I had that done Jeff right mm -hmm. and then they would all be digital links to these CDs that I have and now we have smart TVs so I believe on my TV I can go on to my internet or email or wherever and go on to the cloud and I can find it there and then just play them right on my TV? That's yes. how that would work? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because that's, that's confusing to a lot of people that aren't savvy in it. That's why I wanted to just be clear. Well, from that perspective, it, it, unless you're a techie, it, it can get very confusing. So I, I, I like to keep things very simple. So, I mean, whether you want to, in, in, in most cases, a lot of people ask me for a USB, a, a, a thumb drive or a USB, only because that's all you have to do is just plug and play. You don't have to go to the cloud and do all this other stuff, then stream it. And well, it's not, that's not difficult. It just might, it's just not as easy as plugging in a USB drive. Um, I, I know computers right now, they don't come with DVD players. They don't come with CD players. So a lot of people have, still have, the, are the same boat as you. And so I, I do a lot, I do a lot of that. And how do you charge for that depending on how many CDs you're getting, right? Yes. Because not mean, all of my CDs are full, or you know, some are partial. And and the way I'll address that is that if you go to my website, you'll notice I don't have any pricing information on my website. What I do, I do provide a free consultation, uh, and then after the consultation, we'll. I mean, during the consultation, uh, I'll figure out, we'll discuss what you want. I'll gather an understanding of what you have. It doesn't have to be exact. <clears throat> and then we'll figure out what, what type of media is best to put it on. And then I'll write up a, a proposal just to, just to validate what we discussed. And uh, then I'll, I'll send you the proposal for signature and and we we go from there but each project is different that's why i don't put put pricing on my on my website right. my pricing pretty much goes like it's kind of like shopping at costco uh if if you bring me say one vhs tape one vhs tape will be 29.95 for example if you bring me over 50 
your price is going to be seventeen ninety five per tape or something around there. By no means of um, these exact um, price. So. Okay. Yeah. Like well, that's great information. Who, so for like the person who has forty thousand slides, mm -hmm. I'm not going to charge them a dollar a slide. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I'm still working on that price. Um, but yeah. What's really nice for our viewers is that this is something that can happen before anything happens in their lives to just preserve memories and make sure the generations know and then to memorialize people afterwards. So, um, you know, it does both. And Lisa, I'd like to add on one other thing to that. As I mentioned, I found a picture of my grand my grandfather's mother from 1890. Yeah, that's cool. You know what I wouldn't give if my 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 grandparents or my parents were still alive to ask them these questions to find out more about genealogy rather than you, you can still go to ancestry.com and, and these other sites from a geneal a genealogical perspective and ask ask people to do some research for you, or you, you can even do it yourself. But if you can get personal accounts while people are still here, it's that much better. Yes. And that's why or, I come in. That's what she does. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what, what I do with the, my book project. Yes. So I know exactly what you mean. Yes. That's awesome. Because one of the other services that I offer is I can send somebody a videographer to your house. Ask somebody, you can ask, they'll ask you a bunch of questions. I think around 160 questions. The video will be time-coded. After it's time-coded, it's, it's uh, preserved and it can be, be preserved for up to 300 years. So say someone 300 years from now wants to ask you a question, they can literally ask you a question and you can answer. That's my kind of project. Well, I like that. I love that. So technology has gotten to a point where I can take you from the past to the present all the way to the future. Nice. Very nice. Very nice, Jeff. You do some really great, important work, especially to keep people's legacy alive and really memorialize people. I love that. Love that. Thank Let's you. have your contact information one more time, Jeff. All right. Sure. Thank you. Um, www at or Seven. Jeff at mydigital-memories.com or www.mydigital-memories.com or my phone number is 703-861-2793. That's great. It's really nice to meet you and do some really important. Oh, I really appreciate this. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. We'll let you know what we do um, since uh, Susan does something really neat about legacy work. Susan, talk about your books. Well, I do a four week book project and it's for people local on Long Island. I can come to you. Otherwise, we work on Zoom together and I accumulate about um, 10 to 12 hours worth of audio through questions that I ask you in a simple conversation like this. And it's fun because people go off on tangents and get different memories just stemming from the one question I asked. And then I take all of that information and I weave it into a, a book, a 12 by 12 book uh, with text and photos, all the photos that you send me. And it ends up being anywhere between 50 and 100 pages usually. And they're on very, it's on that, that very thick um, stock. So the pages cannot be torn like the, those new wedding albums that they do. And then I present that to the family and it's, it's just an incredible gift for, for generations to come. I work with a lot of seniors to get their stories down. And although my last couple are with um, end of life with a terminal diagnosis, I just did one for a woman who was 43 with two young children at 10 and 12. And just as I gave her the book for review, um, she passed. So she did get to see the final version, but this book, the way that I structure it is filled with 
it's filled with um, tips and advice and life wisdom for her two children to refer to as they grow older. I mean, she went through, I went through prom with her, falling in love, traveling, spouses, and, you know, and moving forward. So it's such a meaningful gift, these things that, and, but people have to be aware and they have to either pre-plan for them or know about them uh, to put them into place. So finding the clients to tell this to, you know, can sometimes be a challenge, but there is a challenge to get it done ahead of time before you pass. So that's one of my main projects that I'm working on now. And you can find that at eastendulacare.com. The address is up above, or that's my phone number, and we can have a, a, a consultation about that. Talk about the garden, too, because that's another part. The healing garden ball. Ah, Lisa likes now when I talk about the heat. She wasn't so sure at the beginning. Well, I wasn't so sure. They're long, they're long Island stones that I, I find myself, and I put inspirational messages on them, and they're in a ball. And it's a therapeutic healing tool is what I call it because I put instructions on it just to sit with one rock each day, five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night to review and reflect on this certain inspiration. And the first one I started was uh, if you have a friend who's grieving, it helps them. But you talked a lot about pet loss, Jeff, and I, I made one for pet loss um, for a friend with cancer going through cancer treatments right now. Uh, and I made one for a caregiver because who cares for the caregiver? So there are really some special messages on there for them. Nice. And a couple others, but you can find them on my website. And Lisa, some of the things you do? Sure. So as a bereavement specialist, I help people um, do their journeys their own way, uh, whether that's individual work or whether that's uh, some kind of workshop. I love, again, memories, that's what I specialize in. And I help people celebrate holidays in a different way and try to move forward with a new life. It's never gonna be the same, we all know that. Uh, but we do know that life goes on and our loved ones would want us to be happy in our lives. And I tell people that all the time, but it is a process and I understand that process really well. Um, so I do that and I have two books that are support books for pancreatic cancers. My husband died of that 13 years ago. I really believe in the cause and um, our local organization here, the Les Garten Foundation, is the world's largest not-for-profit uh, that does pancreatic cancer research for an eventual cure and also early detection. That's the other problem with that disease. So uh, both books are on Amazon and they're also on my website, www.familiesmoveon.com. And it's all support from people who have already gone through the process. So you don't feel as alone as we all did when we were going through it. I didn't even know where pancreas was, by the way. Uh, and the doctor said there was a growth on the pancreas. It's like, where is that? So I don't know. I must have failed biology along the way. I'm not sure what happened to me, but I didn't know anything. So anyway, spend our time doing that. So there we yeah, have so it. So if you have any questions about today's video, please reach out to Lisa and I, and we can connect you with Jeff yep. um, or connect you with any one of our services. And we really appreciate um, having you with us today. Were there any last minute things you wanted to throw out there, Jeff? Um, what are the other services I offer that I was just thinking about it are travel videos, travel memory videos. And one of the things we do that's kind of unique is that we, we provide a service where as you're taking the pictures, I can automatically create your video while you're doing it, wherever you are. <laughs> Real time. So by the time, by the time you end up coming home, your video is done. Wow. Nice. That's, That's cool. Nice. That's cool. Very neat. A new wave of things that are happening every single day, new things, right? Yes. We have to just yeah, go absolutely. with the flow. Yes. Yes. Anyway, Jeff, thanks so much. We appreciate oh, thank it. You. you do really important work. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Bye.